Good evening from Hard Rocks Park in Glasgow for the Zenith Data Systems Challenge. In other words, the British Championship. It's all unofficial, but who could possibly doubt its credibility with Rangers and Arsenal currently occupying the positions they finished up in at the end of last season, north and south of the border. About 30,000 will be here at Ibrox tonight, thousands more watching on a giant screen at Highbury, millions worldwide. And I don't care where you're watching, Ian St. John, it won't be as cold as it is here in Glasgow. One of the coldest places in Europe, I gather, tonight. That's one thing about that, the weather. The players can't stand around, otherwise they freeze to death. So I would expect to see a, a lot of uh, running around, a, you know, a good physical game. And I do hope that Rangers play a bit better than they have done in the big games here at Ibrox, you know. Uh, the European games I'm thinking about. I think the pros on the day didn't play well. It's a real challenge for them tonight because the Arsenal are a, a good side, a class side. And I think Rangers will have to be at their best to beat them. Will Rangers dictate the pace? In other words, will it be more Scottish-style football or English-style football? Well, or, them, or European-style football? Well, with the amount of Englishmen on the pitch, I think it'll be an English-style game. You know, there's only about four or five Scotsmen playing. Uh, I think the home team, obviously, with the fans here tonight, egg, you know, egging the Rangers on. I think the home team have got to make it. But Arsenal, as we know from uh, what we see down in England, very good counter-attack team as well. And I'm expecting tonight a very good game. Great credibility, isn't it? I mean, it's the British Championship. No oh, one can yes. possibly dispute that. Oh, as you said there at the start, that both teams are, are where they finished last year, up at the top of the table. So their form is good at the moment, and we can expect, I should think, an excellent game. Ian, thanks very much indeed. Right, what about the, the two managers? Graham Souness and George Graham. Strong personalities, as indeed they were as players. Little dummy by Johnston, gets it back from Rush. It'll come maybe for Dalgleish, just nicking it away from Richardson. Souness spreading it for Neil. Played on again for Johnston. Here's Dalgleish. Neil in for Souness. Soonest for Liverpool. Ross. Oh, and now Graham. Quick cross for Samuels. Graham! Oh, a fine goal! George Graham! And what a goal it was! George, many years ago, I suppose if things had turned out slightly differently, you could have been a Rangers player, couldn't you? Yes, uh, one of the last times I was here was I was 15 years of age when I came to see uh, then, the then manager, Scott Simon. Uh, he wanted to sign me on as a schoolboy, but... Um, the place has changed slightly since then. You've always been a, a great advocate of the, the big clubs in England and in Scotland competing against each other on a regular basis, haven't you? I think so. I think the people in, in England and Scotland like to see that. I think the format in England has become a wee bit tired, and I think it's like it's the same up here. I think this could be a test case for a British league? Well, I think that may be one for the future. Uh, incorporated, obviously, uh, into our own leagues, because I think that's uh, the basic strength of every every championship is the, to be strong in your home league and they obviously extended into a British league, it would be ideal. I think we'll find out tonight that this is a very important night for the Scots. What about for Arsenal and for the English? Well, obviously it's important for us because, uh, you know, we won a very, very exciting championship last year and uh, uh, Graham's done the same up here with Rangers. They've had a tremendous uh, few years and uh, we want to take them on up here in Scotland and uh, obviously to beat them. Do you think the game has lots of credibility, Graham? Without a doubt, I'm sure you'll see you'll see again tonight. Both teams attempt to play football, and we hope that tonight both teams are, are able to. The conditions are perfect, although it's a very cold night. There's not a wind. The pitch is perfect, and there's players out there who can entertain and can perform. And hopefully, we'll see that tonight. What about a comparisons of style, uh, George, between top English clubs and top Scottish clubs? Are we likely to see that tonight? Uh, I don't know. I think there's. Uh there's different sort of systems and uh, different styles of play, both in England uh, and in Scotland. I think that's one of the strengths of British football. When you go on the continent, uh, the majority of teams play with a sweeper system, maybe with the exception last year of uh, AC Milan, who play with a flat back four. But I think in British football, I think there's a lot of systems. A sweeper system, there's, uh, you know, the, the flat back four playing a lot of offsides, and uh, I think that's the beauty of our game, a variety. I think you'll see a very good game tonight, very competitive. Have you learned anything from that? Of course, I've, I went to watch them twice in the last four weeks, and I'm very impressed. They're very workmanlike. They'll be hard to be. I would describe Arsenal right now as maybe the hardest team to play against in Britain. I think with the style operate. Well, that interview with Graham Souness and George Graham recorded a little bit earlier. Incidentally, there's been a, a traffic jam not far from Ibrox Park tonight. Thousands of spectators have been uh, held up, so the kickoff was delayed. But you'll be able to see the match right after the break. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Ibrox Park. We are ready for the best of British. Your commentators, Ian St. John and Alan Parry. Well, Rangers are without their leading goal scorer, Ali McCoist, who has his stomach upset, but what a replacement they've got. Mark Walters, currently serving a three-match suspension for league games, will play alongside Mo Johnson as a central striker. The other names will all be familiar to football fans throughout Britain. This team contains seven full internationals, four of them English. Mark Walters, who has England World Cup ambitions, and his pace and skill a real handful, I'm sure, for Arsenal's defenders. The Arsenal lineup contains five internationals, and the big news is the return of Paul Davis, who hasn't played in the first team since the end of last season. He's been out with a thigh injury. So the match gets underway with Arsenal in a chain strip of yellow and dark blue shorts. Rangers in their famous blue shirts and white shorts. Rangers attacking from right to left in this first half. Terrific atmosphere here. Over 30,000 inside Ibrox. Niall Quinn dispossessed. And Goff helps the ball back to Chris Woods in the Rangers goal. Rangers, Scottish League champions, a record 39 times, including twice in the last three seasons. Arsenal, English champions, nine times, winning the league for the first time in 18 years, of course, in that memorable finale last season. And, appropriately, both teams currently top of their own leagues at the moment. Gary Stevens with the throw. Out by Winterburn. Laid back by Marwood. Adams having a little bit of trouble getting it clear. And Paul Davis gets his first taste of the action. Stevens with the throw. Trevor Stephen. The ball laid in foul. Johnston. Cleared by Dixon. Back to Trevor Stephen again. Stevens with the cross. Johnston unmarked in the middle, but also offside. No Johnston, as you can see, wearing gloves. It's a desperately cold evening here in Glasgow tonight. The referee, one of the most experienced officials in Scotland, David Syme from Rutherglen. And a warm welcome, if that's the appropriate phrase, on a night as cold as this, to uh, all the supporters watching the relay of this game at Highbury. I'm sure you'll be warmer than us. Quinn's header, knocked back by Trevor Stephen. This is Gary Stevens. And another touch for Chris Woods. Merson in this new partnership tonight, trying to test one of England's deputy goalkeepers, Chris Woods. Johnston the target, O'Leary heading clear, but just before he did so, he pushed Mo Johnson. Free kick to Rangers. Terry Butch has gone up for it, Trevor Stephen looking for him, and he won it as well. Walters in on it, and Lukic strong. Well, Ian St. John. Uh, a Scot shouldn't really be feeling the cold as much as an Englishman, but I suspect you are. Well, I'm glad I had my porridge this morning, Alan. I'll tell you, it really is a parky night up here at Ibrox. But uh, I think the, the football tonight will warm us. Both teams look, even at this stage, as if they've come out to try and play a bit. And uh, what I think all fans don't like to see is uh, when it's one of these games where you feel there's not an awful lot at stake, although we are saying it's a British Championship match, you know, sometimes the players don't put it in. But I think tonight we'll see both, both teams really getting himself about the pitch and being really busy. There's Mo Johnson with a good little layoff. And back it comes. And that's a good ball as well to Monroe on the left. And a dangerous looking cross. And Johnston was very close to getting on the end of it. Knocked behind by Winterburn for a corner. The first of the game. Good ball. Monroe's cross almost finding Johnston on the far post. A lot of danger from the likes of Goff and Butcher from corners, although this one goes in along the ground. Trevor Stephen again. Cleared by Richardson, but only as far as Butcher, and his snapshot well wide. 
Terry Butcher now in his fourth season since his move from Ipswich and an ever present in virtually every one of those seasons. Ferguson up well, but straight to Winterburn. Quinn got it through, and then Merson finding Marwood on the far side. Only Rowcastle in the middle for him at the moment. He aimed for him, but it never reached him, which is clearance. Adams winning it well. Out again by Goffin. It's a good ball for Walters, and a break on here. Stephen, and he's got Johnston inside him on Mark. Good challenge, though, by Lee Dixon. That was superb defending by the Arsenal number two. Because had Walters been allowed to play that ball through, or rather, had he been able to receive it from Stephen, there would surely have been a goal. Walters was unmarked. Which is clearance. O'Leary again wins it, but it drops this time for Monroe. Adams. Now Spackman. Johnston. First touch let him down. And Adams gets it clear. Rowcastle under pressure here from Munro, but he's done well. And he finds Merson. Quinn's unmarked in the middle. And Marwood outside him. And he's seen him. This is Marwood. Laid back for Davis, which possibly wasn't the right ball. And then the cross from Winterburn, and it drops to Quinn. And the Rangers very relieved to get that one away. They looked real danger then. Munro eventually cleaning things up. minutes gone in the first half then still Rangers nil Arsenal nil Brown with the clearance Johnston up very well well it proves that uh, even when you're up against a guy who's over six foot if your timing's right then you can still win the ball Brown got up very well. This is Walters. Johnson in just behind him. Munro through. And Johnson turned to look at the linesman's flag, almost knowing, as Munro played it through to him, what the decision would be. Butcher got it clear. Ferguson, a poor header. Straight to Marwood. He's got Winterburn outside him. Richardson. Marwood again. Trevor Stephen got it clear, only as far as Rowcastle. Dixon thundering down the right for him. And the tackle by Munro is a foul. Chris Woods lining up his defenders. Richardson over the ball. Quinn has gone forward. And is being joined in the box now by Tony Adams. It was aimed at Adams and came through to Quinn. And the referee allowed play to go on then when it looked as though there'd been a handball as that free kick came over. You can see it again here, Ian. Well, this is the first time that Arsenal have managed to get in touch with the, the free kicks, and they're always very dangerous. And it did look as if uh, Nell Quinn gave it the old elbow there to try and knock the ball down. Perry Groves is about to come on and replace Marwood in the Arsenal lineup, but not until the ball's gone out of play, of course. Forward from Munro. But too far forward. Lukic coming way outside his own penalty area again, but finding Quinn. 
Turned forward by Davis. Here's Quinn again. And the referee gives a free kick against him. This time it was handball. And uh, the referee's attention being drawn to the touchline. And Arsenal now will make their substitution. Brian Marwood has clearly got a bit of a knock. Goes off. And Perry Groves will take his place. There he goes. A lot of pace. Very direct. Four goals already this season. As Trevor Stephen gets onto that through ball from Walters, but offside given. Referee said play on. With Arsenal in possession. I'm not sure O'Leary realised that. I think he'd rather have had the free kick then. Goff wins it back to Butcher. That was an unusual decision, wasn't it? The, the referee overruling the linesman on a, an offside decision. It's not often you see that. Quinn wins it again. Merson nearly reached it. Davis! Oh, what a tremendous goal by Paul Davis! And what a way to celebrate your return! to first-team football. 27 minutes gone, and Paul Davis, who hasn't played since the end of last season, shows that his reactions are just as sharp as they were when he was a regular. How quickly he moved onto that loose ball, and the shot arrowed beyond Woods. It was an unstoppable shot, and uh, Terry Butcher didn't get a tackle in there. Davis read the ball was racing through, and from just edge of the box there, into the top corner. A real beauty. Tremendous goal from Davis, and that has livened things up now. Rangers go a goal down. Butcher forward to Walters. Ferguson's there, O'Leary's interception. But here's Trevor Stephen, and a good ball. Roe Johnson, three players in the penalty area. He looks for Monroe, but Lukic is too tall to be beaten by that kind of cross. Dixon. Merson, Quinn, good ball, Rocastle, Dixon, good play, but it hit him on the heel and breaks for Brown. Now Trevor Stephen, five is Spackman, Stephen, Brown, good challenge from Rocastle. Spackman, Stephen, Trevor Stephen incidentally playing in a central midfield role these days. So used to seeing him on the right for Everton in England. Here's Gary Stevens. Walters. Never reached him though. Rocastle. We'll have to go alone for the moment. Merson fell. And Rocastle quite adept at keeping the ball. Now Merson's back on his feet and in possession. Richardson. Rangers pushing up, trying to play offside. Dixon. And Rangers get their offside. Arsenal are going to make another substitution here. David O'Leary, who I thought was struggling a moment ago when the ball came into the area, uh, has gone off injured. Looks as though he's pulled a muscle, and Gus Caesar will take his place. Well, that's bad news, really, uh, for Arsenal, Ian. Well, two players off already, yes. But I must say that the game... I think you're OK. Adam's in possession. I was going to say, the game has been a lot of effort going in, and it's been a, an interesting game, but what we've missed really has been goal-mouth incidents. But uh, that goal certainly livened things up. A good kick by Lukic. Walters wins it. Quinn. Still Quinn and Mercer. And that should definitely have been Arsenal's second goal. That's a bad miss by Paul Merson. The ball came through almost by accident. Quinn battling away for it. It bobbled straight into Merson's path and he had time to do better than that, Ian. Yes, yeah, so a bad miss from young Paul. It's not often when he misses him when he gets through like that. He's usually a very good finisher. Seven minutes to half time and that could be a crucial miss, but here goes Quinn again and he finds Merson again. Is that a push by Brown? No, says the referee. Play on, Monroe. Dixon's challenge. Merson can't believe it, but he, I suspect he's more disappointed with his own uh, inaccuracy a few moments earlier. And one thing's for sure, Niall Quinn is causing a lot of problems to Rangers' defence with his 
physical style, and the crowd don't like it. Well, I don't come across players as tall as him up here in Scotland, that's for sure. And uh, the big fella's putting himself about tonight. Let's face it, he's fine for his place, isn't he? That's right. A well won by Butcher, a towering header. Johnston. Brown. It's not a bad ball either. Ferguson. And he's beaten Caesar. And he's beaten the second challenge from Davis. Good play. Gary Stevens. Now well, he hit it straight at Groves. But retains possession from the rebound. Trevor Steven hooks it in. Gus Caesar away. Roe Castle. Quick break on here for Arsenal. They've got three men forward. Good challenge though by Brown. It just stopped Roe Castle in his tracks. But Groves unmarked on the left. Rowcastle. Dixon. And the one-two didn't come off. Munro with the interception. And the crowd enjoyed that moment. For the ball too far ahead of Mo Johnston. Less than four minutes of the half remaining then. Rangers nil, Arsenal won. Butcher wins it back, but only as far as Davis and now Richardson. Gary Stevens. Davis. Merson's had a good one for Groves. The interception by Gary Stevens and Adams having a very sound game for Arsenal tonight. Tony Adams hasn't really missed a thing. No, that's correct. Uh, Rangers really haven't found a way around the uh, Adams yet tonight. And uh, I think they'll have to have a little chat at half-time and decide there may be other ways of trying to play in this game other than what they've been doing in the first 45. Stevens. Graham Sooners confined to the stand these days with Walter Smith, his assistant. They're banned from the touchline. And their job starts now because there's the half-time whistle and they've got to try and sort out Rangers' first half inadequacies here. A splendid goal by Paul Davis, separating the sides at half-time. A lively game, not quite as much goal-mouth incident as we would have hoped for, but plenty to play for in the second half. Half-time score, Rangers nil, Arsenal won. Rejoin us after the break. So as Rangers get the second half underway, welcome back to the Ibrox Stadium for this unofficial British Championship match. Bonnie Ginsberg has come on during the half-time interval in goal for Rangers, and they've made two other substitutions as well. David Dodds and Tom Cowan have come on. John Brown and Richard Goff have gone off. So all three substitutes permitted. That's Cowan, a 20-year-old left-side midfield player who came for £100,000 from Clyde. Arsenal, remember, have already made two of their three permitted outfield substitutes. And they lead by one goal to nil. Forward from Davis, the man who scored the goal. And Butcher gets it back to Ginsberg, who's played eight games this season. There's Davy Dodds, former Dundee United man, wearing number 12. Dodds has gone into a forward position. And Mark Walters has now returned to his more normal uh, outside left role. Butcher's clearance, that's an Arsenal throw. Merson. Groves couldn't keep it in. Johnston. Mar 
Arsenal's throw. Winterburn will take it. Incidentally, surprisingly, in friendlies and testimonials and so on, these two clubs have met no fewer than 21 times down the years. And uh, it's very much in Rangers' favour. They've won 10 of them. Arsenal only 4-7 drawn. Mark Walters for Rangers. Intercepted by Dixon. And Spackman brought down by the Arsenal number two. Didn't really need to do that. Spackman wasn't in a particularly threatening position. Dixon won the ball initially, and then as Spackman took it off him again, Dixon's challenge was a bit wild. Stephen and Walters, the two players over the ball. Walters just sets it up for Ferguson to hit it. And despite the ooze of the crowd, it was well wide, really, in. Yes, it was wide, but I'm looking at uh, the range of substitutions, and I think Graham Souness was quite right to uh, change things down his left flank. I don't think there was an awful lot happening in the first half down that side, and uh, he shook it off. He's got Walters out there with uh, Cowan behind him now, and uh, we'll just see how they manage to operate. Bobby Robson having a, a look at all the Englishmen on view. Here's Munro. Dodds, Johnston, Ferguson, Stevens, Spackman. Under pressure from Davis, and he's done well. Spackman, that's a good ball. Stevens, good play. But uh, just one ball too many, perhaps, but given away again by Arsenal. Terry Butcher. He's got Cowan on the left, and Walters directly ahead of him. Spackman, Steven. Good start to the second half, this, by the Scottish champions. And that's a good ball as well. And... Oh, it's good ball there. Oh, Johnson on the end of it. And that's the equaliser. Five minutes into the second half. Spackman with the through ball. Ferguson onto it. He whipped it straight across the goal mouth. And Johnson made contact. Lukic claimed with a hand, he said, with his chest. I think with his chest as well, but the pressure from Rangers finally paying off. A good ball here across the face of the pitch, and you'll see a little more diving in there, and I think he did get it with his chest, and then it went. So Mo Johnson gets his 11th goal of the season, and early in the second half, Rangers 11. Rangers 1, Arsenal 1, and the noise around Ibrox now really something. John Lukic reluctant to return the ball. He still feels the Arsenal goalkeeper. That Johnston used a hand then. But from that angle behind the goal, it looked as though it was the chest. So Arsenal have to build again. And they begin that rebuilding by going all the way back to their own goal. Oh, Johnson gets his seventh goal in the last nine games. Quinn up well at the other end. Merson's there, but good defending. And indeed the free kick given for a foul on Munro. Johnson fouling Adams. Looked a bit harsh, that decision. Free kick to Arsenal, top of the first division again, of course. Quinn will be the target for Winterburn. Back it was met, uh, it was met by Groves and then cleared by Stevens. Dodds fouled by Caesar. The referee is allowed play to go on again. Dixon. It's a good ball for Merson. And a good-looking cross, and Quinn was on the end of it. And Arsenal are back in front, or are they? Yes. Suddenly, Quinn looked, thinking the goal was going to be disallowed, but his fears were unfounded. It stands. Merson got in behind the defender, Monroe, clipped the ball dangerously across. Quinn went in and met it. It hit Ginsberg on the chest, and there was nothing wrong with that goal. 
I took a slack marking by Rangers and, and Monroe in particular, allowing Merson to get in behind him. But once he got there, he played a lovely ball across the six yard box, and the big fella with his long leg manages to poke it in. 12 minutes gone in the second half, then. Rangers won, Arsenal two now. Now Quinn's fourth goal of the season. Stephen came back to him off Davis. Now Spackman. Ferguson. Groves beats him in the tackle. Winterburn to Merson. What a good layoff, although he was unlucky. Smackman read it well. Stevens. Strange ball by Stevens. But it finds Walters in the end. Dixon clear. A lovely football from Rowcastle and another dangerous looking break here for Arsenal. Still Rowcastle. What a run this is. Still got it. And then gave it away. What a disappointing end <laughs> to that fine run. He said a fine game uh, tonight, David Rowcastle, Alan, and uh, that was a tremendous run. But his overall game, I think, tonight is better than it's been for some time, I think. He's, he's not had a great season so far, but uh, he's sparkling about this evening. Mo Johnson, Winterburn, Stevens, Dodds. header from Butcher, Dodds beaten by Richardson but there was a handball appeal and it's been upheld by the referee Monroe with the free kick Quinn's back to defend Monroe in again Straight forward for Lukic. Walters. Spackman's in there. Cowan. That's a good ball. Mo Johnson. Spackman. Stephen. Spackman again, and Stephen. Good attack this by Rangers, but a good challenge again from Adams. Groves caught in possession, and Winterburn rescued the situation. Well, the tackle's really flying in now. Groves using his pace. Was he fouled by Ferguson? He was. Half an hour of this game remaining. Ferguson's foul on Groves gives Arsenal the free kick. They lead by two goals to one. Niall Quinn, who got the second goal, forward again for the free kick. Winterburn will take it. Won by Gary Stevens. The ball breaking for Davis, scorer of the first goal. Groves is in there. Davis again. This is Winterburn. The cross aimed towards Quinn, and the goalkeeper did well. And Quinn's challenge was a bit clumsy again. A real favourite here, Bonnie Ginsberg with the Rangers supporters. And he had to be brave and decisive then as that cross came over. Quinn's not the man you want to see coming at you in that situation. Merson's flick, Quinn. Now played the ball in behind Rowcastle. It's so fast in the middle of the field that we really need somebody to try and settle it down a bit. Stevens. Good challenge by Adams. Quinn, Merson with him and Rowcastle. And now Dixon. Merson wants the ball played in high to the far post. And Dixon held on to it too long, really. but gets it back and does well and still Dixon 
Rocastle. Good play by Rocastle, a dangerous cross and a spectacular clearance by Munro. Walters, Johnston, and the ball had already uh, crossed the line. And also, I think there was a foul as it was played up the line on Cowan. Dodds. Groves there to dispossess him. And in fact, the referee has said that uh, Groves was fouling the Rangers man. Cowan with the free kick. Short to Monroe and now to Trevor Stephen. Merson working very hard to deny him space. This is Stevens. Ferguson. Spackman. Great deal of pride at stake here tonight. Rangers believe they've got a team as good as any in Britain and they want to prove that against the English champions. But at the moment, it's Arsenal leading 2-1 and really enjoying a good spell in this game. Merson, a wasted ball though. Walters with space in which to attack the defender. The situation he relishes. And as he played it through to Mo Johnson, there was a misunderstanding. Richardson, Quinn, now Walters can try again, Stephen, Butcher, good strong run here by Terry Butcher, and he ran into trouble in the end, and was fouled, Butcher forward for the free kick, taken by Walters, Butcher's header, oh that was well saved by Lukic, because that was creeping in. Lukic did well to reach it, Butcher's header aimed at the top corner, and Lukic just palmed it away, corner, Butcher there again. came off the head of Davy Dodds for a goal kick. with the header, Caesar got it away. Midway through this second half now. And Caesar did well. Dodge is there with him and is brought down. Just Caesar trying to claim that Dodds made the most of that, but he certainly made contact. And this could be a dangerous situation, this free kick. Caesar had the ball initially, he was thinking about playing it back to Lukic, and Dodds came in and made it a problem for him and went down. Walters free kick, Lukic coming, and just about got there. Ferguson turns it back, Stevens. Steven, difficult ball, headed away by Adams. Cowan. Adams there again with Johnston. Winterburn, dispossessed by Stevens. And he just got it wrong, really. He was trying to angle it into Walters, but got the angles wrong it was almost impossible really to get the ball across the way he wanted it there with his right foot it'd have been better just having a go over his left peg surely butcher Steven, good play, Ferguson, Johnston, but Adams is in there again like a tiger. He's had determination written all over his face all night, Tony Adams. 
Mo Johnston. Butcher. In towards Dodds. And Winterburn gets it away. Stevens. Dodds and Walters just behind him and Caesar was climbing all over Dodds then. And I would have to say that Caesar's very fortunate to get away with that challenge. It's always difficult for referees to decide whether the forward is backing into the defender or not. Well, actually, looking at it again from that side, I think maybe the referee was right. Ian, what's your view? Well, I thought Caesar had jumped too early and uh, he was coming down, you know, as the Rangers player was wanting to go up. Anyway, a talking point as the long throw comes in. Oh, and it's a difficult bouncing ball in there. Ferguson's in there. Dodds is in there. The shot by Spackman. And finally, Arsenal get it away. Oh, and a bad ball there by the youngster Cowan. And he's a bit fortunate not to be punished for that. But he takes the throw in quickly and intelligently. Walters. Rangers throw. And Quinn working hard to defend this time. Steven. Oh, could have eluded everybody. Here's Spackman. Still Spackman. Oh, so close to his first Rangers goal. And after that melee in the Arsenal goal mouth, when the ball finally came out to Spackman, he kept his shot low and he hit it hard, but it went just wide. Again, Coward. And he was fouled by Richardson. Richardson or Geordie, even he said he felt it was freezing tonight. And the free kick taken and rather wasted by Rangers, but they'll have another one for Hamble. which has gone forward, marked by Quinn, who he has been marking when the ball's been at the other end. What a battle those two have had. Walters with the free kick. Interesting, Johnston. Put a little ball out as well to Cowan. Winterburn was the only man who really reacted as the cross came in. It's a corner. Trevor Stephen will take the kick. Good kick either. But it comes back to Cowan. And Cowan was tackled just as he hit the ball. And that's a free kick. I've been impressed with this young fellow, young uh, Tom Cowan. Got a, got a belt in the nose from the referee there. But uh, he's very confident, very quick looking as well. And uh, you know, he, he looks a bubbly little character. Under five minutes to go then. Arsenal are holding a 2 1 advantage here now facing this free kick Trevor Steven and uh, Ferguson two players lining up the shot it's Ferguson who hits it straight at the wall Monroe Dodds moves in quickly Walters is there the whistle's already gone it won't count and as Johnson lashes the wall into the net he, he knew I think he'd heard David Times whistle go Ian yeah, again, it was a, a good ball by Cowens, you know, neat little ball in there. And it would appear, well, Mo Johnson was offside anyway, but it would appear it was a foul against Dodds. Richardson. Back it goes to Dixon. Monroe. Dixon's there again. Johnston, that's a good ball. Stephen dispossessed. And a foul by Richardson. So maybe Rangers will have one final opportunity as Spackman is brought down. It's been a lot of stoppage time added. Three minutes of it. This has got to be the last chance, surely. Stephen in. Butcher's in there. Away by Adams. Winterburn will try to prevent the corner and does so. 
And there, in fact, is the final whistle at the end of this unofficial British Championship. It's Niall Quinn's goal which has given Arsenal victory. Paul Davis with a brilliant first half strike, giving the English champions the lead. Mo Johnson pulled one back for Rangers early in the second half. Quinn's winner, though, gave Arsenal a deserved victory over the match. A lively encounter, good competitive football, and how nice to see the British Championship played on a British ground. That's got to be the way forward for this new competition. So the final score at Ibrox, Rangers 1, Arsenal 2. Arsenal then, the new British champions, unofficial or not, they certainly ended the hard